Okay, we're going to talk about the timing of the rapture in this particular video. Um, I want to share with you what I believe is one of the most important verses uh, as far as uh, helping people to understand the timing of the rapture. And it's in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter, or 2 Thess Thessalonians chapter 2, and we'll start reading at verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of, and I'm, of course, reading from an English translation here, so I'm going to read the way it's, it's written here, uh, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, in the Hebrew, it would, uh, the, the Messiah, na real name is Yahusha, uh, the Mashiach, the Messiah, and our gathering together unto him. That you soon that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ or Mashiach is at hand. Now Paul, of course, is writing this letter, and he wrote this letter to the Thessalonians. And uh, but he says here in verse two that you soon not be shaken in mind or troubled because they were troubled in the fact that um, evidently someone had forged a letter and sent it to these people and had said that the rapture had already taken place. And that's why they were troubled because they, Paul had taught them in 1 Thessalonians uh, about the rapture, 1 Thessalonians chapter four, verses 13 through 18. And uh, so they were aware of the rapture what they were uh, troubled about was the fact that they may have missed the rapture. And so he he's sent an, another letter to them, uh, comforted them, uh, explaining to them um, how they should, should react to what they've heard. So he says in verse 2 again, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by a letter as from us. See, somebody had forged a letter indicating that it was from Paul and telling these people that they had missed the rapture. Uh, as that the day of Christ or Mashiach is at hand or it had come. Now, the reference here, here um, going back to verse one he, uh, of chapter two here, he, he talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, or Yahusha Hamashiach, and our gathering together unto him. Now this is really, he's talking about two different things here. He's talking about the coming and by our gathering together unto him. The gathering together unto him would be in reference to the rapture because that's what will happen at the rapture as he already wrote in, in, in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 that we would be called up to meet the Mashiach and the Messiah in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. So that's the reference here when it says gathering together unto him is speaking of the rapture. Um, but, he's, he, but he also indicated that in the, in the first part of that verse, he's talking about the coming of Yahushua HaMashiach, the Messiah. Now, I've, I've shared with you all in the past in my videos that the, the coming of the Messiah is in two phases. The first phase is he doesn't come all the way to the earth. A lot of people, that's why they, they, they're confused about, you know, this and thinking that the rapture and the second coming are one and the same, and they're not. They're totally different. And, uh, and, and, and the first thing that I can point out is that the rapture, he doesn't come to the earth. He appears in the clouds in the sky because it says we shall appear with him, you know, in, in the clouds to be with him, and so shall we ever be with him. So he's not coming to the earth to physically land on the earth as he as he will at the second coming when he touches on the Mount of Olives. And so that's a different uh, event than the rapture. But the, the coming of the Messiah is in two phases. First, he comes to gather his elect, those that are, have put their faith and trust in the Messiah, and they're the born again believers who belong to him. And as he indicated in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, he said that uh, he was going away to prepare a place for us. 
and that he was he would come back and take us to be where he was, which is in heaven, which is in the Shamaim. And so he, this is a reference to the rapture, and it's a fulfillment of his words to us that he would come back for us and take us to be with he where he was, and that we would be always with him at that point. <laughs> wow, what a great comforting message here. And it says, uh, I'm going to continue reading now in these verses here. Uh, verse 3, Paul says, let no man deceive you. See, you, there's so much deception out there, people uh, that don't understand Scripture or, or, or incorrectly interpreting Scripture. And the main reason a lot of times, too, is that the, they get these groups of people uh, mixed together. There's, as I've shared with you also, that there's, basically three groups of people on the earth today. They are the Gentiles, or we would refer to them more accurately as unbelievers. And then there's the Jews, the Yahudim, uh, and then there's the church. Now, again, the church is not a physical building, per se. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a the word actually, Hebrew word is kahel. I've, I've done a teaching about this. It's the Hebrew word kahel. And the meaning of the word means an assembly or a group of people. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a symbol group of people. Um, and it also um, is used by the Messiah, Mashiach, in Matthew chapter 16, where he said, I will build my church. Of course, he, he would have used the word kahel, being Hebrew. And now I know in Greek the word is ekklesia, but they all still mean the same. It's an assembly, a group of people. He said, I will build my church upon this rock. Of course, he was talking to P the Apostle Peter when he asked them, uh, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And so they gave their answers, you know, uh, uh, what they, you know, they some said that he was uh, uh, Elijah come back from the dead or, or he was, uh, uh, I can't remember the different prophets they quoted, but anyway, uh, Peter said that thou art the Christ, or thou art the Mashiach, the son of the living Elohim, or uh, son of the living God. And Yahushua, the Messiah, said uh, that flesh and blood did not reveal this to him, but that his father had revealed it to him. And then he said, upon this rock, or upon this revelation, is really what the Messiah is talking about. He's talking about a rock being a foundation. He said, upon this revelation, I will build my assembly, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And of course, when he said, I will build, will build was in the future. There was no church at that time because uh, he had not paid the price for, for our redemption yet. But that's why he said, I will build my church because the church started after he had died and paid the price for our sins. And the Ruach, or the Spirit, was given to those that believe. That was fulfilling a promise in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. So, the church began when he, after he had died and paid the price. And for those believers that had put their faith and trust in him, they were given the, the Spirit. And that's the church that he has been building for over 2,000, for around 2,000 years. Uh, those that have uh, recognized who the Messiah is and put their faith and trust in him. And that's the assembly that he was making reference to. And so when I use the word church, because it's in here so many times, of course, it's, it's the meaning of the, of the word. Keep in mind, it's for born again, born again believers who have recognized who the Messiah is, whether they be Jew or Gentile, they're all now one in Messiah. And so that's I want you to help you to understand that when I use that word church, that's what I'm talking about. So there's three groups of people on the earth today, Gentiles or unbelievers, uh, the Jews or the Yahudim, and uh, the church, those that have been born again, those who are part of this assembly that have recognized who the Messiah is. And uh, so this is the assembly that Yahusha, the Messiah, is speaking about. And then he says... <clears throat> Verse 3, again, going back to this, let no man deceive you for by any means, for that day shall not come. Now, pay close attention to what I'm about to say here, because a lot of people think that this reference right here, where it says that day shall not come, 
is speaking about the rapture. Well, it's indirectly talking about the rapture, but it's not specifically talking about the rapture here. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come. See, what day? They were concerned that they were in the tribulation. They were concerned that it had already started, and or the day of the Lord, or the day of Yahuwah, uh, more accurately described in the scriptures, it's described 25 times in the Bible, the day of the Lord, or the day of Yahuwah. And he's telling them, let no man deceive you for that day. That day is what he's talking about there. That day, the tribulation or the day of the Lord had already begun. It's not speaking specifically about the rapture there. He's, because uh, it, this would not make sense if you really read what he's, try, what he's trying to convey to them. That day or the tribulation or the day of the Lord or the day of Yahuwah had not come except now notice this, it won't come except there come a falling away first. Now this is where I'm getting the, the, the crux of this teaching here, is that the word falling away first, of course falling away is the English word, but the Greek word is apostasia. And uh, the, he says that, that the, the day of the Lord will not come except there come a falling away that's the way most people interpret that, thinking about that there's a great falling away of believers before the rapture or the day of the Lord would begin. That's not what's being said here. He's saying that, uh, the, 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 and here's why. I mean, I'm going to read, read the notes I have here. Uh, the, by the way, the first seven English translations of the Bible all render the word apostasia as a noun, as either departing or departure. The first seven English translations before the King James all rendered this word as depart or departing. Now this is gonna make all the difference in the world when you see if it was correctly translated, it would, it would help you to understand that the rapture has to be a pre-trib rapture just by this one verse here. It says, <clears throat> uh, in fact, I'll just read off to you real quick. There's seven Bibles, seven translations, by the way, before the King James that use this word apostasia or, or translated as departure. A physical departure, by the way, I may say. Uh, the Wycliffe Bible in 1384 the Tyndall Bible in 1526, the Cloverdale Bible in 1535, the Kramer Bible in 1539, the Breaches Bible in 1576, the Beza Bible in 1583, and the Geneva Bible in 1608. And then you have in 1611, the King James Bible came out, and they departed, they they. They departed from this word depart here. They, they use the word falling away. Well, there, there, there's no reason. They gave no reason why they translated it falling away instead of departure. But I believe that uh, all these seven translations before the King James had it right. Now, I know a lot of people think the King James Version is, is absolutely without any error in it, and, and, quite, and it's not true. There's certain uh, errors or mistakes or things that have been uh, translated incorrectly. I'm not saying that the Bible's, you know, incorrect. The, the uh, original texts are the most accurate that, that can be found. Um, and all, all translations are, have some kind of some error in them. They've made something different because it's man being involved in interpreting the languages uh, and using uh, incorrect tr translated words at their discretion of what things should ha have been said. I hope you understand that. <clears throat> um, I want to read, here it is. Um, here's some notes I made in regard to this. It's terribly unfortunate that most English translators have followed the King James in departing from translating apostasia as departure. This has caused much confusion as to the timing of the coming of the Messiah, the Messiah and our gathering together to him. It has also darkened the abilities of many to rightly divide the word. You may have noticed that many combatants of the factual 
pre-trib rapture pitched their tent in the King James camp only. <coughs> this cult, as I may call it, mistakenly worship a translation whether they have been deceived to believe is somehow perfect. Let me assure you that no translation of Scripture is without error. Man cannot help but tamper with it. Only the original books and letters by the original authors are perfect. Many of the translations continue to continue the confusion. We find translators having used the word apostasia, and then some of them use the word revolt, and some use the word rebellion, and push the view that it is apostasia from the faith in the latter days. However, extensive studies in Scripture confirm that this word is almost every case means departure from, a physical departure. It cannot be an abstract departure from faith in this context. The fact gives a staggering amount of weight that this departure is the very physical rapture itself, the changing of bodies from corruptible to incorruptible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 53. And it happens before the man of sin is revealed. Hallelujah. The Latin Vulgate, St. Jerome, Jerome's Latin Bible translation from the late 4th century, prior to all English translations, used decisio, which translates as departure. E. Schuller English translation, one of the finest Greek scholars, translates this word in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, as departure. <clears throat> now, I remember this had been probably over 20 years ago, uh, maybe longer than that. I can't remember exactly, but I know it's been probably at least 20 years ago. When I read these verses in, in not really having uh, done study and to find out the original meaning of departure or, um, you know, or apostasia, <coughs> I could tell right here, just reading this, that this, this means that the rapture had to precede, you know, the day of the Lord. And so, you know, and then I got all these other confirmations later on, you know, and um, so I'm convinced that this, these verses right here prove a pre-trib rapture, and, it, and it's not a talking about, the, the Apostle Paul was not talking about a big falling away from the faith before the rapture would happen. He's talking about right here, the day of the Lord would not come. In other words, the tribulation would not come or start except there be a departure first. And the departure he's making reference to, of course, is the rapture, which he already talked about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. <clears throat> and then he says in verse, uh, and he says, it says, kept to come a departure first and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. I heard someone, you know, a few years ago, and I was sharing with them about the nearness of the rapture, and they, in an email or text, I don't remember what it, what it was, but they said they made reference to the fact is that, you know, they were waiting to, for, the, for the Antichrist to be revealed before the rapture would happen. That's not, see, that's why when you, when you get these things mick, mick, mick messed up, that's going to change the way you understand Scripture. Uh, he, we're not waiting for the Antichrist to be revealed. He won't be revealed until after this departure takes place, which, of course, would be the rapture of the church. Then the man of sin will be revealed. And the reason he can't be really revealed is because we as the church are holding back the powers of darkness, not totally a, a, on this earth, but we have authority over the enemy. And the Bible talks about in uh, as we read on down here further about the fact is that um, we're, we are, what, what withholdeth him is making reference to the church. We as the church are withholding the total forces of darkness from completely revealing their wickedness on this earth. After we're removed, you're talking about getting wicked wickedness being on the earth. It's going to be magnified much larger than what we see today. And that's because we are holding him back. And, uh, but after we are taken away, he shall be revealed. I'm going to pick this up because I've gone a little long, much longer than I normally do in my videos. But uh, I did want to get this 
information out to you. Uh, I want to continue on to this line, and and uh, we'll we'll talk about this. And, and but I think it's one of the best verses that you can prove to, to anybody that can understand, go through the process of understanding this, that this is talking about the rapture must take place or the departure must happen before before the day of the Lord or the day of Yahuwah happens. Okay, we'll pick this up on our next uh, video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Please like this video if you did. It helps get the, my videos out there to more people that haven't seen them. So it, it helps me in that regard. And if you agree with what I'm sharing with you, then please share this with others. And uh, I've, as I mentioned before, there's over a, close to 2,000 videos I've got on my channel that I've, that I've taught on a lot of different subjects, except for in, in not just the rapture itself. So uh, please make use of those. And um, so we'll pick this up on our next time together. So thank you so much. I love you. Yahuwah loves you. And shalom.